Welcome to Country Fried Rock, where we talk with musicians to find out what inspires their creativity. Country Fried Rock, music uncovered. My guest today on Country Fried Rock is Matt Green of the band Belladere. Welcome. Thanks for having me. This is kind of fun to be able to track different bands down in sort of that family tree of bands. And honestly, I can't remember exactly how I first heard about you all, but it might have been Couch by Couch West. Yeah, we did a video for that, I think, not this past South by Southwest, but it would have been South by from 2012. Yeah. And a lot of us play in another band called The Polly's. Mm-hmm. I wasn't playing in that band at that time, but they were out at South by that year, and then we went back this past year as well. How did Belladere come together? You know, I moved back home to Muscle Shoals a few years back, and when I moved back about a year later, I started to put the band together. I found some people um, who had heard the, the EP that I had originally recorded with some other guys and, and just self-released and just found some musicians um, who enjoyed the music and uh, who wanted to join the band. Yeah, it, it was just a little bit more of a recording project between myself and uh, Ben Tanner plays keys and, and engineers uh, most of our stuff. And uh, a couple of our friends, we were living in Birmingham at the time. Yeah, I lived there for... Uh, seven or eight years, and so that's kind of where the, the roots, I guess, of, of Belladere started. I sort of just moved back, because, I, I mean, I had friends here who were playing music and, and playing a lot of music, and I, I was definitely interested in that, but I, I don't know if it was, you know, at the top of my list of things to do. Um, <laughs> but I think there's something about living here, uh, it just kind of grabs a hold of you, and, and it won't really let you go. So at some point, you know, I decided to start pushing and trying to try to put a band together. From that early EP to then laying down what the lineup was going to be like, how did it lead to this particular record? Well, I guess it, it was a slow movement. You know, we put the band together. We played for about a year, pretty sparingly. We, we didn't play out a lot. And over a period of five or six years, I just kind of built up a, a decent amount of songs. Oh. And and I and I was ready to, and I think Ben as well, was ready to do something that was a little more proper. So we actually started tracking the record in March of or a, March or April of 2012 and finished it late last fall, early winter, and have just sort of been sitting on it. In the meantime, I happened to have spoken with Ben, and then he had formed Single Lock Records, so... How did you all end up associated with that, or was that more coincidence? It just sort of all kind of happened at the same time. That wasn't planned. You know, the record was done. We were sitting on it, and we were trying to find, we had talked to a few other labels, like trying to find a home for it. And then, you know, Ben and John Paul and, and Will, uh, formed Single Lock, just came to us and said, hey, you know, we know you've already paid to record this, but we would like to put it out, and we'll figure out a way to make it work. Obviously, they're they're my good friends as well, and I think somebody doing something local here, it, it was it was time for that to happen, and so I, I'm really happy that it came together and that we can be a part of it. Yeah, that's really cool. In talking with him about that, it was really neat to hear about. Well, I'm in a position to be able to help make this happen, and you know, these guys are great, and people need to know they're great. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's the sort of the impetus of the of the label. There's a lot of good music here, and we need to find a way to disseminate it a little better than it has been. That's kind of where the idea for Single Lock came from, I think. Country Fried Rock is proud to announce our second compilation to raise funds and awareness for musicians' mental health services. You can help keep music alive. Check it out at countryfriedrock.bandcamp.com. All of the proceeds raised go directly to the model program for community-based mental health services, reaching the musician community of Athens, Georgia. Born of tragedy, but making a difference for people right now. Prevent musician suicide. You know an organization makes a difference when people like this step up to the plate and donate songs. We thank them and we thank you for your generous contributions to preventing musician suicide. Keep music alive. This is Matt Green with Bella Dare on Country Fried Rock. What is it that a label means to a band in this day and age? Well, I, I think it can be very different. I mean, uh, the way things are changing, you never really know. I mean, I think for me, we needed some financial support that we wouldn't have otherwise. I think the main goal of the label is to help local artists here create a record. Mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, that's what they want to do. So our situation was different. We had already created a record. So we needed, you know, something else at that point. You know, what they've done for us is is help us with duplication of the record and some other things that we wanted to do, promotional sorts of things. 
you know, hopefully get a little bit of tour support here and there. It's small scale, but it's better than the situation we were in a year ago. And I think it's only, I think with time, it's it's only going to get better mm-hmm. after this initial investment. Speaking of duplication, I think I was looking on your Tumblr and saw some pretty looking vinyl, maybe? Yeah, we got some pretty vinyl. Got LPs and CDs will be available. Meanwhile, you said early on y'all were playing kind of sparingly over the course of a year. That's picked up quite a bit for you all in playing out. Yeah, especially recently, we've been playing a lot more. And the way that the band works with sharing members, we kind of have to, you know, we have to kind of dedicate a block of time to one band. That seems to work pretty well. And like the Polys, for instance, had their record come out. I think it was last October, and mostly through the winter and the spring, we were playing poly shows. There were Belladere shows here and there. Now the polys are kind of taking time off, and it's sort of Belladere's turn. From a logistics standpoint, you all have some shared members with the polys. What does that work in terms of your lineup? Basically, Belladere is the polys without Jay Burgess, the lead singer. So it, it is almost the same band of people, or the same group of people. So, you know, logistically, it's just it's just a calendar thing. You know, we just have to put our holds in, you know, talk to communicate with each other about this is what's going on, that's what's going on with mm-hmm. each band. And, you know, it, it takes a little extra work, but it's hard to find um, a lot of musicians in this town. Um, there's not, you know, it's a small town. There's not a plethora of people who are, who are dedicated to, you know, going out and playing mm-hmm. quite often. So, you know, this group of guys are all kind of dedicated to both bands, and so far it's worked really well. Sonically, you all are quite different from the sound of the Polys. I think so, yeah. There are certain things, I think Jay and I both kind of have a an affinity for sort of like textural kind of, kind of stuff. I, I think you can hear some of that in there, but I think in terms of songwriting especially, uh, it, it's pretty different. Never miss a radio show from Country Fried Rock. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Just search Country Fried Rock. If you'd like to learn more about our music, you can check out our website, www.belladaremusic.com. B-E-L-L-E-A-D-A-I-R. It's kind of been a, a slow build with lots of bits going on over a pretty long period of time. What is it you all are looking for to happen with this record? I think we're the kind of band that slow growth is, is probably the name of the game. You know, I think the record is not something that hits you in the face and maybe tells you what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a record that I think people need to listen to more than once, you know, and, and sort of digest it that way. I think our band's going to be the same way. I mean, the one thing we want to do is just raise the profile of the band through press, through touring, everything that we're sort of lining up and doing and getting ready to do right now is going to feed into that. And we'll push it as hard as we can. And hopefully by the end of the year, you know, we will see some results from that. What's going well? I mean, I feel really good about the press we've gotten so far. I know we've got some other things in the pipeline that are mm-hmm. really nice. Spin's going to premiere the record. It's going to be a full album stream. So that's really exciting, especially for our first record. I don't think that was necessarily something that anyone would have expected in the band. So, you know, generally we've just gotten really good response thus far. For me personally, I just think playing is the most important thing that we can do. So the more we can go out and present the music, the more connections we can make, the more records we can sell. And that's, in the end, I think that's kind of the goal. I know y'all have played out on a somewhat limited basis so far, but what places have been pleasant surprises? We played Baton Rouge this past weekend, a place called Mud and Water. The place is fantastic. Staff was great. Opening band, was local band was great. Great crowd. The, I don't know if we knew what to, what to expect going in. We all felt pretty good about the show going into it, but it definitely exceeded any expectations that we nice. had. It was great. And, and we do pretty well in Birmingham. We've played there fairly often over the past couple of years, so that's always kind of a home away from home for us. It's been interesting from my standpoint as a music fan to be able to talk with a lot of the different people who are involved in music, the newer music coming from the Muscle Shoals area. Did you grow up playing? Yeah, well, I, I grew up here. I, you know, I guess I picked up the guitar when I was, you know, late teens at 15, or mid-teens, 15, 16 years old. So, I, you know, it didn't really grab hold and, and really become a, a daily part of my life probably until, I mean, really a few years ago. It was something through college and after college that, you know, was dabbled in but was never really taken that seriously. Really moving back here sort of solidified it um, mm. as something that, that I must do all the time. (laughs) What flipped that switch for you? I think I did. I I don't know what what flipped it, but I think 
some sort of motivation just kind of like welled up inside of me that had probably been there for a long time, Uh but it had just been dormant. I don't know if there was one thing necessarily that made it click. I mean, certainly being here, you see other musicians who have varying amounts of success, but they're playing pretty much all the time. They're pretty dedicated to their craft. So, you know, that's a that's an inspiring thing to be around. So it definitely has a little bit to do with that. Did you know you can download each podcast for free? Just scroll down to the bottom of the page on countryfriedrock.org. If you'd like to learn more about our music, the title of our record is The Brave and the Blue, and it can be purchased at singlelock.com. You mentioned earlier that you had been writing for maybe five or six years and that some of the early tracking, that's where those songs were coming from. Mm-hmm. Do you continue to write a lot? Yeah. You know, I was I was sitting in my office this morning working on a new song. <laughs> 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 so, you know, right right now it's it's really busy, so you just kind of try to steal time. I'm, I'm an early morning person usually when, when I like to write, but like at night or something, you know, after, after I go to work or, or whatever. I've done during the day. I'm not very productive in terms of songwriting. I like to try to wake up a little earlier sometimes, you know, and and put in a little time on it. Are you finding that anything is changing in your writing? I don't know. I don't don't know if I have that perspective on it. For me, writing is, I I just can't objectify it very much. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just one of those things that that happens, and, and even in the course of writing a song, I don't ever feel like I necessarily have a, you know, a topic or a feeling or whatever that I'm trying to communicate, I, I think a lot of those things just kind of fall into place, maybe almost like supernaturally or something. It's just one of those things that I, I just try not to think about too much when I'm doing it. When you all as a band are working up songs, how does that process go for you all? Well, I mean, typically I'll bring a song in, you know, that's either partially finished or, or pretty close to being finished, and we'll just work on it, you know, just hammer it out. I pretty much give everyone free reign to sort of do what they want to do on the songs and try to make it work together. I'm I'm certainly not not a dictator (laughs) or anything like that. You know, the band's changed a little bit from Mm -hmm. the first record. We have a different drummer now. That's changed things a bit in terms of how how we're going to be able to write songs together, and and that's kind of something that, that we're working through right now. Specifically in the recording, had you recorded it with Ben? Ben engineered it. We recorded it at a place called The Nut House. It's a great studio, and he trusts Ben. And I've known Ben since I was a little kid, played T-ball together and all that kind of stuff. I'm comfortable with him. Things are very intuitive between us. As far as I'm concerned, I'll probably always work with Ben. Brave and the Blue was a band. It was full band. We would cut most things live. And then, you know, obviously there's some overdubbing in the uh, drums, bass, guitar, keys, or steel or something. We, We do all that at one time. I am very grateful to you all for sharing a song for our musician's mental health sampler. Yeah, no problem. I actually lived in Athens for a little while, so I was already familiar with the space. It's a great organization. I wish there was something like that available everywhere. Yeah. Did anything change about the songs from how you had been playing them to when you decided to record them? Well, a couple of the songs were, you know, the band had never heard. Ah. We just kind of came in fresh on those. I brought them in to the studio, and we just worked them out. There are probably a couple like that. The one song that changed significantly from live to the studio was actually Easy Way Out. Live, it was a little bit, it was much more actually upbeat, and we kind of slowed it down. And, you know, it, it's funny, when you when you do that, it, it does throw a wrench in things. That, <laughs> that's the one song I remember where, you know, we banged down it for six hours mm-hmm. or whatever it was until we finally hit a take that, that we liked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there was even a break in there at some point, you know. Like you yeah. just, we just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it has its drawbacks, but I think, I think in the end those kind of decisions probably make you a better band and actually made the song better. I really liked the way that track turned out. Has anything morphed since the recording until now? I don't think so. You know, a lot of those songs, when we recorded them in the studio, they weren't songs that really we had been playing live. So even now, there are some of those songs that we've only played live a handful of times. So we're just, they're pretty fresh. Certain tracks are. Yeah, it's it's interesting, like a song like uh, Sister that's on there. That's a, it's a really old song. That was probably one of the first songs I ever wrote six or seven years ago. And then, you know, some of the other songs were written a week or two before we went to the studio. So it's an interesting mix of at least in terms of timeline, um, when they were written. Well, as you all are getting ready for this run, are you all on the bill with anybody else? 
we are doing a short run as part of that with uh, Future Birds. Other than that, um, it's just sort of, you know, we'll probably have a local on with us in most places that Mm -hmm. we're playing. It's kind of exciting to be looking at this, having the opportunities that are coming to you all with this release, you know, rather than doing it totally on your own. But it's still a pretty DIY venture. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, we're pretty lucky, you know, that I think... I've been on that totally DIY side of things, and, and I know plenty of bands that still are who are making really good music, and I think there are a lot of bands out there who would really like to be in a, the position that we're in, and I'm really thankful for that. Is anything in music ever ideal? Probably not. <laughs> so, you know, we're just kind of taking steps up the ladder, and hopefully we'll we'll keep climbing it. Anything else y'all have on tap? Just steadily going to be booking throughout the fall and the winter, Hopefully, sell a lot of records. <laughs> That's the goal. It's hard to do these days. Is there anything different about the vinyl versus the CD version of the release? No, no, it's the same track list. There is a digital download with the vinyl, though. Anything that you can tell us about the packaging that goes along with that? Well, the artwork is actually uh, from, from a painter from Birmingham. Her uh-huh. name is uh, Amy Pleasant. Uh-huh. It was really nice to work with her. I just run into a uh, installation at some point at the Birmingham Museum of Art that she did. This was back six or seven years ago. Mm-hmm. And when it came time to, to put it all together, I, she just, for some reason, she just clicked in my head. I remember the, in that installation, and I just got online and looked at some of her paintings. And it was really nice to work with her. I think the artwork turned out really, really nice. Matt Green, thank you so, so much. I really like the Belladere record, and I think it's going to be a nice surprise for people who are learning about all these emerging bands out of the Muscle Shoals area. Cool. Well, thanks. It was really good to talk to you. Safe travels to Mm y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Country Fried Rock. Music uncovered. Find our full playlist at countryfriedrock.org. You can subscribe to our weekly podcast on iTunes. Just search Country Fried Rock. Our theme music is from The Heap. Check them out at heapdeluxe.com. That's H-E-A-P-D-E-L-U-X-E. Our Country Fried Rock stinger is from Steve Soto and the Twisted Hearts. Country Fried Rock. Copyright 2013 by Lilypad Productions. All rights reserved. Country Fried Rock is a partnership with the nonprofit Florence Regional Arts Alliance. Your donations to this program are tax deductible to the extent you are eligible under U.S. law. Country Fried Rock radio programs are distributed to public radio through the public radio exchange, prx.org. Ever he been helping us some country fried rock?